Oh man, no time for you. Die wilde geen vrienden meer zijn, weet je nog? Een bote, een bote, een bote, bandeko, nu zie me. How's everyone doing? Greetings to the Bena Congo, Bena Zambi, Bana Isolele. To the Eastern and Western Hemisphere, I pray that the spirit of Nzambi, the spirit of our Congo, is forever with you wherever you are in this world. Hallelujah. Kembo, I am Nabi Kefas. Welcome to this live episode. Today we're going to talk about Esau and Jacob, or a Jacob and Esau. And we're going to look in to this question. Um, is there any information or tradition about Esau Jacob Congo? Yes, in the Congo tradition. Do we have Esau in our stories? Is he there? Is he present? If so, it will confirm that Jacob and Esau, the story of the Israelites, came from the Congo. All right? So the Congo, we are the source. We are the origin. As long as certain Hebrew Israelite camps do not agree with us, you will be missing a huge part of the puzzle. Yes? And I will do... Yeah, so let me keep that for myself. <clears throat> All right, so invite people to join us uh, right now. Uh, call all your family members, friends, share the link, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not. <clears throat> and we're going to look into this uh, Jacob and Esau story. And in the Bukongo, we have the tradition of, you know, the twins who are called Jacob and Esau in the Bible. So when we identify and analyze, you see, when we analyze the Bukongo tradition, we can identify the origin of all of it. Yes. So once again, Congo is the origin. <clears throat> if you believe that the Israelites were a people, special group of people, you know, chosen by the Most High, um, who were appointed to be the custodians, you know, of sacred things. If you believe it, then understand that when you know, when you know the truth, or may I say, when you receive the revelation of the truth, right? And you understand it. That truth will set you free. It will lead you. Ingeta. So welcome. I know I haven't been, yeah. I haven't been here for a minute, you know, especially with a life. Uh, but we're here now. Okay? So, like, subscribe, share this video. And thank you for all those who are live today in the chat. Um, it's always special when we go live, right? But with, with no, without further ado, let's jump into it. I hope you are excited to look into this uh, mystery with me. Yes, to dig and to confirm once again. Yes, because all we do is confirming confirmation upon confirmation that we bring out to present undeniable truth, undisputed that we the Bana Congo, the Congo people, are the source. Congo is the source. You cannot go around it. Okay? You can hate it. 
You can fight it, but the truth will remain. Congo is the source. Everything came from Congo, Kachiopa. We are the Banabilaka, the children of the promise. We are Bananzambi, the children of the Most High. Okay? We are called by his name. One of the divine names of the Most High is Congo. Yes. Nekongo. Akongo. We are called by his name. Therefore, we are Congo. Bakongo, right? The land is also called by the name of the Most High. Congo. So if my people who are called by my name, yes, if my people, which translates to Bantu, who are called by my name, Congo, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, Pene, right? Penuel or Pene, is Kikongo. See? Is Kikongo will seek my face. I will forgive them sins and heal their land, which is also called Congo. You see, we cannot go around it. <laughs> people hate it. People fight it. The Hebrew Israelites don't like it. But guess what? It is the revelation that will set you free. Once you know that Congo is the source, your eye will be open, you know, to see even further, deeper. Because okay? many Hebrew Israelites till today are fighting against the truth of Congo, calling us Hamites and things like that. Okay? But we know who we are, especially a Congo who, know his, who knows his tradition cannot be defeated. In Geta. <laughs> well, hey, okay, let's let's go. Uh, let's go into it. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. Who are you? That's the question. That any one of us, if you are a Muntu, should ask, you know, who's this Mundele? Who's this Muzungu? Who is it really? You know, and the Muzungu, you know, is anxious because they have secrets. They have, you know, like skeletons in their closet. They have secrets. They have things they kept secret for hundreds of years. So they're anxious. And they ask themselves the question, do they know? Do these Negroes know? Hmm? But Jacob asked himself the question, but Ozanani, who is this guy? <laughs> hey. So today we're going to answer and you will know that Jacob and Esau can be found in the Bukongo tradition, okay, in the Bakongo tradition, the tradition of the Congo people. So if we can trace back Jacob and Esau in the tradition of the Congo people, then it will confirm to us that the Congo are the source of everything, okay? And the Kadian Pemba, they knew about it. That's why they were determined to destroy the Congo people. They destroyed DRC. They destroyed Kinshasa, you know, and, 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 and for, because of them, Angola was in a 30, almost 30 year civil war because Angola was part of the larger kingdom of Congo. Yes, and it's exactly like that. It's prophecy. 
right? But today we're going to look into it and we will see in the tradition of the Bakongo, you will find Jacob and Esau there. So I will try not to make this a very long session. Yeah, so, but uh, let's see if we can wrap it up in an hour. Are you ready? Let's go. Now, I, like I said, mm, right. Yes, like, like I said, right? Mm, among the Bakongo, twins were traditionally called Simba and Nzuzi. Okay. And I will explain the meaning of those names. Because when I just say it like this, it doesn't make any sense if you don't know the tradition. But I will explain it to you and you will gain the understanding. Among the Bakongo twins, among the Bakongo twins were traditionally called Nsimba and Zuzi. That's the tradition. And the one who followed after them was called Landu. Yeah, Landu comes from Landa, which means he who follows after. And after Landu, traditionally, will come Lukombo. You see? So you have the twins who are named Simba and Zuzi. And after them follows Landu and Lukombo. When you read Genesis 25, verse 24 to 26, it says the following. When her days, the days of Rebecca, to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, see, every time you read this word behold in scripture, uh, there's a prophetic event that, that, that is to take place, right? something significant so behold there were twins in a womb and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment and they called his name Esau and after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. Now, this is the biblical tradition, right? Many of you know it, I have no doubt, uh, but the biblical Esau and Jacob are Nzuzi and Simba in the Congo tradition. Yes, the tradition of the Bakongo, the Congo people. Now, if you ask the elders, why are the twins called Nzuzi and Simba? Elders will say, it's the tradition that we have inherited from our ancestors. Long, long, long time ago, one of our ancestors had a twin and they named the twins Simba and Nzuzi. And that's why we have this old tradition that when twins are born amongst the people, amongst the Bakongo, we, call them Nsimba Nzuzi. That's what every elder, if you ask that question, will tell you, you understand? So it's a tradition of ancient times. Our people just, you know, forever have been calling twins Simba and Zuzi. Okay, let's go. 
Now, Simba, Simba is Jacob, and I'll explain the name Simba later, okay? But Simba is Jacob. And when we look into the biblical Hebrew, yeah, into the Strong's, and we compare that with the Kikongo, um, you will see that even the biblical Hebrew is Kikongo. See, so Kikongo is the Paleo Hebrew. Now, Jacob or Yaakov or Yaakov as they pronounce it, in Kikongo is Ya-Kuba. Yes, so Ya-Akof in the Kikongo is Ya-Kuba. Now, Ya, you know the word Ya, right? Uh, let me do it like this. Yes. Uh, the word ya signifies honorable one. Yes, that's the definition. Honorable one, elevated one. Okay, one who is greater than you. That's the word ya in King Congo. Ya in King Congo can also denote dominion. Yes, or leadership, authority. And then we have the Hebrew word for Akov, which is Akab. Yes. The Strong's is there for you who wants to verify. So then we have the Hebrew word, which is the root of Akov, Akab. Akab in Congo will Kuba, right? Kuba. Hmm. I think I remember a, a a film. What was the title of that film? Um, Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. There was an ape, I think, named Kuba, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. Or Koba. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Koba. The O and the U are interchangeable, of course. So Koba, that ape, that rebellious ape, the fighter, right? In the planets of the uh, in the planets of the apes, apes movie, is actually a version of Kuba. Yeah. Kuba. He was named Koba, but the O and the U, the O and the U are interchangeable. So Koba can be Kuba. Now, Koba or Akoba will signify to take, take, hold, receive. Yes, to receive, to hold. Now, the action of grabbing something is uh, Kubaka. Yes, Kubaka, which denotes the action of taking something, of, you know, holding something. So we can see clearly here when by studying the Hebrew Strongs, right? Uh, we can see that Yaakov is actually the Kikongo Yakuba, he who has authority to take and hold or to receive, okay, to possess. Dominion. That's why you read that Jacob was the chosen one. In, in, in the book of Isaiah, you know, in the book of Malachi, you read that the Most High loved Jacob, but he what? Hated Esau. Uh, Yakuba is the one who is elevated. Yes, that stems from, that's the definition of Ya. Ya in Kikongo means the elevated one, the honorable one, you know, the great one. And Kuba means the one who takes, who holds, who receives. So that's the definition 
the meaning of the name from the Kikongo, Yakuba. Interesting, eh? So, Jacob, who in the tradition is also called Nsimba, is Yakuba. Yakuba. All right. So, Ya, once again, signifies the elevated one, honorable one, great one. Kuba, one who takes, one who receives, right? One who holds. Kuba can also denote power, strength. Ya uh, can also denote dominion. So, Jacob, Ya Kuba, is the one who holds dominion. The one who received, yes, the power, the covenant from the Most High. Now, and after, this is Genesis 25, verse 26. And after that came his brother out and his hand... Yes, what do you say hand in Hebrew? Yad, yad. Took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Yakuba. Because he took hold, right? <laughs> you have seen the definition. Now, look at this. When we look at the Hebrew, there is the strongs for those who want to verify uh, the Hebrew for hand is yat or yat. It's the kikongo yaadi. Yes, it's the kikongo yaadi. Now, yaadi and ya, you know, mean dominion, region, to hold. In Lingala, we'll say kosimba. Yes, to hold. Now, he took hold. Right? He took hold of Esau's heel. A simba ki. O kosimba in Ingala. Now, therefore, he was called simba in the Bukongo tradition. Why? Because simba is the one who hold. What is he holding? He, he has taken dominion, right? And he holds dominion. He has received the blessing, the covenant. Ingeta. So Simba means the one who holds Simba, which is Yakuba, right? So we have Yakuba and we have the traditional name of Simba. Interesting. Now, Simba is the king. He is the holder of the blessings. He is the warrior. He is the lion. Lion. Simba. So Simba means strong one, means warrior, okay? He's the holder of the blessing. A lion is also called Nkosi, Nkosi in Lingala, Kikongo. Nkosi among the Zulu means master or lord, yes? Nkosi. Now, when we look at the um, consonants, S, M, B, S, M, B will give us Sambo, which is number seven in Lingala, right? So, S, M, B, which is also the consonant for Simba, will give us Sambo, which is number seven in Lingala, seven represents perfection and holiness, right? Seven represents perfection and holiness. 
It also represents the day of the Sabbath. That's seven. Uh, S and B will also give us Sambu, which means blessing. See, Sambu, blessing. And S and B will also give us Samba. Samba, which is prayer, right? Prayer. And Sambi or Zambi, which is God, yes, or the Most High, God. So Simba, who is Yakuba, Jacob, is the one who possesses the covenant of the Sabbath, right? The Sambo, which is the Sabbath day, the seventh, number seven. He is also the one who possesses the blessing, which is Sambu. And he's also the one who possesses the spiritual prayers which he received from the Most High, which is Samba. Yes. And then, and then, He is God on the earth. Hmm. I think, uh, are we having problem problems with uh, connection? Am I fading in and out? Let me know, because... Uh, I think there might be some problems with the with the internet. Let me know in the chat before I continue, because I've I, I'm having a lot of people jumping in and out. Maybe it's due to the the, the connection. So let me know. Come on. Okay, so everyone can follow me, right? You can hear me. You, the image is, is clear. We can continue. If, if not, I will have to stop this uh, session and try again some other time. Right? Let me know if we can continue this session or, you know, We'll try again another time, another day. I have one, yes, okay. Uh, Matondo, about just business. Um, all right, we'll worry. Yes, so Simba is the perfect spiritual man. Yes. All of you who are watching who have not responded in the text, in the chat, are you here? Are you sleeping or what? Hmm? Unbelievable. People watching and just three people reacting. You guys, Antuka. But anyway, Simba is the perfect spiritual man okay who is Simba Simba is Jacob so according to this simple analogy uh, in which we have defined the words okay we have looked into the Bantu words we can see 
the tradition of Jacob amongst the Bakongo and analyzing the name Simba and Yakuba, we have gained deep insight in its meaning. So now we know uh, the meaning even of the word Simba. And when we have taken when we take the consonant S and B, we see Sambo for the number seven, we see Sambu for the blessing, we see Samba for prayer, we see Zambi or Sambi, which is the most high. And this tells us that Simba, okay, we can conclude that Simba is the perfect spiritual man who has the covenant of the seven day, yes, which is the covenant of the Sabbath day, who has received the blessing of the Most High, right? Who has received the prayers to connect him with Nzambi and Pongutulendu, his spirituality. So Simba is complete as a perfect Muntu. Perfect Muntu. Ingeta. Now, then, when you go to Genesis 25, 27, we are told that Jacob was a plain man. Okay? That he was a plain man. Now, I, I really never heard anyone break it down like we are going to break it down today. Drilling intense. See, so now some people, even pastors, many pastors have said that Jacob was just a simple man, weak, you know, um, just a plain man, dwelling in tents. There was not really, you know, the only thing he had was his Connection with the Most High, his spirituality, right? Wrong. That's not the explanation or, you know, that's the wrong exercises. Jacob was not a plain man. When you look into the word plain, right, what they have translated plain, that word in the Hebrew Strong's is tam, right? Tam. It's the word tam, which means complete. Now, actually, <laughs> let's uh, go there. You know, let me copy this Strong's number, which means complete, usually morally pious, specific, gentle, dear, coupled together, perfect. You know, he who have plain. So, from all these definitions, complete, pious, morally pious specifically gentle, dear, you know, coupled together, perfect, undefiled, upright. They choose plain. Okay? They choose to translate it in this sentence as a plain man. Why not say Jacob was a perfect man or a complete moon too? Hmm. No. Okay, now that's the word tam. Okay, that's the word in Hebrew, tam. The outline of biblical usage says a perfect, complete, complete, perfect. <laughs> One who lacks nothing in physical strength and beauty, etc. Now, to lack nothing physical strength and beauty your DNA must be top-notch okay so that means that whoever this person is on the earth his DNA is superior to who on this planet what race on this planet has the superior DNA in physical strength and beauty. Who's genetically stronger? You see why they choose to 
translate that first with Jacob as a plain man and not Tom, perfect, complete, lacking nothing in physical strength or beauty, complete, perfect, wholesome. Okay, now let's keep that. Morally innocent, having integrity. One who is morally and ethically pure. It is describing the Muntu as the Kadian Pemba discovered the Congo Kingdom. This is what they said about the Congo people. These people have great integrity. They are morally and ethically pure. This is what the Catholic priest wrote. This is what the travelers, the Portuguese travelers wrote in their journals. And in the books, people like Pigafetta. Yes. People like Carpenter. Mm -hmm. They wrote this stuff in the books. This definition describes Bantu, the Bakongo, in the original. Yes, in the original state, when the Europeans encountered them, the Portuguese, they are the ones who came to uh, defile us, to make us unpure, unholy, yes, to lose our moral innocence, to deprive us of our purity. That was the mission. Okay, now let's go back. So, Tom in Hebrew, you have seen the definition. It's not plain, it's complete, perfect. Yeah, what else? One who lacks nothing in physical strength and beauty. I love this one. Right? It's very strong definition. When you when you think on this definition, the only people who come into mind are the Negroes, the Bantu, the Muntu. Yes, only people. Oh no, it, it means uh, it's a spiritual expression. Oh, no, it says physical, okay? Don't come with that nonsense. It says physical. It's not a spiritual expression. Physical strength and beauty. Christians be like. Haters be like. Now that word Tom comes from the root word Tamam. To be complete perfect be finished okay so the word tom comes from the root hebrew root tamam and you know this once again come from the kikongo toma okay toma the mem the mem at the end is not pronounced Yes, as a consonant, it's not pronounced. So you will have tama or toma or atoma in Kikongo, which means admirable, beautiful, and decent. Now, beautiful, complete, perfect. Toma. Tama, atoma in the Kikongo means perfection, beauty. Yes. And ntoma, ntoma, 
with the N Ntoma can also mean a a deputy, right? A deputy, like an a apostle, or one who is sent. All right. Now the blessing. We know the blessing. Look at this, and Yakuba who is Simba in Congo tradition, received the blessing from his father. A uh, blessing from the father is also called Lufemba. The blessing, Lufemba. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven. Okay, This is the blessing which Isaac, Yiseka, is pronouncing over his son, Yakuba. Uh, give thee, give D of the dew of heaven, and it's it's the the rain, okay, the rain of Zulu, the rain of heaven, which uh, the land drinketh up, the blessing from heaven. That's what they're talking about, the blessings from heaven, okay, from Zulu, and the fatness of the earth. Mm. The fatness of the earth represents the most richest geographic place, the most richest land, the most richest soil on the planet. Okay, That's the fatness of the earth. The most richest soil on the planet, the fatness of the earth is Africa, not the Middle East. Okay, not the Middle East, it's Africa. If you can't believe it, it's your problem. But I'm telling you, it's Africa. Pray on it, research it, okay? Meditate on it. Because many of you Hebrew Israelites, not you who follow me, all the Bantu teachers, but those who are still into the Hebrew Israelite teachings and, you know, revelations, let me say, yeah? they still believe. That that so that's the so-called state of Israel, the land of Palestine, is the promised land. You know, I do believe that our ancestors were there, but it's not the promised land. The fatness of the earth, that is to say, that all the riches are there. That is Africa, Central Africa, Congo, Katsiopa. And plenty of corn, that is to say it's a land that produces a lot of food. If Congo is allowed to be free, and it will be free on the agenda of the Most High, when Congo is free, they will be producing food capable to feed the whole world, to feed Africa and the whole world. Congo, right? Plenty of corn. It means that they will be providers of food and wine. Now let people serve thee. Mm -hmm. And nations bow down to thee. Mm -hmm. Be Lord. In other words, be master. Over thy brethren. Not just Esau. Over thy brethren. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. When you are bowing down, you are a servant. Okay? Cursed be everyone that cursed thee, and blessed be he that blessed thee. And it's also what the Most High spoke to me a long time ago. He said, whoever blesses you, Muanamuntu, I will bless them. Whoever curses you, I will curse them. And it's what we received as a prophecy from the Most High as a family, right? As the Most High was speaking to us prophetically in prayer. So this is who we are. The blessing of Yakuba. So Yakuba, who is Simba, 
received the blessing, which is what? Sambu. Okay, now let's continue. Now let's go to Nzuzi. In the beginning, I gave you two names, right? In the beginning, I gave you the name Simba, which we have explained right now. And we also have the name Nzuzi. That is the Congo tradition of Jacob and Esau. Now I have shown you Jacob present in the Bukongo tradition as Simba and Yakuba. Now I will also show you Nzuzi. Nzuzi is the one who is called in the Bible Esau. Okay. Zuzi is the one in the Bible who's called Esau, and Zuzi comes uh, from the root word Nzozo, Nzozo, which means to quarrel. Yes, so Nzuzi, Esau, is the quarreler, man of conflict. Okay? Man of confusions. That's Esau. That is his character. You see, he's the man of conflict, man of, you know, fights. He's the quarreler. It fits perfectly with his biblical character. Isn't it so? It is so, right? Okay. Let me know what you think in the chat. Let me know what you think in the chat. And let's engage in this teaching. I think you, you guys are so quiet. You know? Let me know what you think. So now let's look further into... Um, Isau mm, to see <laughs> yeah, look all right uh, uh, Emery Kennedy says Isau is Saudi Arabia period okay you know I believe that you think so I do not agree, but I, you know, I believe that you think so. I do not agree, uh, but it's no problem. So let's break down Nzuzi. Yes, Nzuzi comes from the root Nzozo, which means to quarrel, which is uh, clearly speaking to the biblical character Yes, this characteristic of biblical Esau. All right. Now, Nzuzi, who is Esau, Genesis 25, verse 26. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Yes, because he came out red like a hairy garment, they named him Esau, according to the biblical narrative. Now, when we look into the biblical Hebrew, into the Strong's versus Congo, now we see the following. In the Hebrew Strong's, 8625, 8615, 8615, come on. We have the Hebrew word Esaf, okay? Hebrew word Esaf. <clears throat> now, when you look into the Kikongo, the word, the name Esaf appears as Nsafu. Okay, Nsafu, which can also mean hairy, felfety, the hairy one. Um, now, it can also mean dishonor or disdain, yes, to insult, depreciation, etc. Yeah, so we have the Hebrew Esaf, which is seen in the Kikongo 
Nsafu. Yes. Nsafu. It's exactly the same. You can see the root S A F E, right? As the root S A F E. We have the U on the end. So, Isau, who is Nzuzi in the tradition, is also Nsafu in the Kikongo. And so, Isau is Nsafu in the Kikongo. Now, we can go further. But I have shown you now the tradition of the Bakongo, right? Where we see Jacob, Yakuba, and Esau, Nsafu, right there. So, what are the biblical Esau and Jacob doing in Congo traditions? How are they present? In Congo tradition. Because the Congo is the source that, you know, the <coughs> because Congo is the source. Yes? Yeah. Now, let's continue. Nsafu. Right? Nsafu, Esau. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. Okay? I think uh, Emery is here to teach. Just pay attention, you know. You can have your, your beliefs and theories. I, I don't go against it. Yeah? I do not go against it. So I know that Ismael married Esau's daughter. It's there in scriptures. Yeah? But I'm not dealing with that. Okay? Emery Kennedy. Thank you. Matondo. I appreciate your, your, your comments, though. Well, good job. So, the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. He, you know, a hunter is a killer of animals. You know? In history, only the Kadia Pemba Mundeli will go into Africa, be killing animals all the time, yes, just for fun, just for sports, not because they're hungry, you know, not to clothe themselves, no, just for sports, for fun. Hmm? That's Isa, right? Mundele Kadia Pemba. All the animals that are going uh, instinct of extinct is not due to Mohindo, it's not due to the Bantu, it's not due to the Negro, but to the Caucasian. It's, it's them. No. We are living in Africa. We don't go around and killing our animals for fun. That is a Kadia Pemba thing to do. We don't do that. It's a sin. Okay, it's a great sin, killing animal for sports. But you will see, Isao, Kadia Pemba, going around killing animals just for fun. Uh, Oh, right. Now, here we are told that he came out red, okay? He's the red person. There is no white man. There's only pink red man, okay? White man does not exist. There's only a pink red man. Ngulu, you know the color of Ngulu? <laughs> it's pink, red. 
Now he came out red. That's the Hebrew word Adom. Okay, that's the Hebrew word Adom. Let us copy that and go here. Okay, as you can see, it's the Hebrew word Adom. Red ruddy of man, horse, heifer, whatever. Red ruddy. All right. And Esau said to Jacob, it's Genesis 25, verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Yakuba. Feed me, I pray thee. That um, this is, this is still going on, okay? That is still going on. Today, the Mundele wants Africa to continue to feed them, okay? Esau still today wants to be fed by Yakuba. Please feed me, I pray thee. So they continue to steal, they continue to rob, you know, to plunder the resources, the natural resources, so that they can feed themselves and reach themselves. Okay, look. Mm. So therefore was his name called Edom. Yes, therefore was his name called Edom. Now, we have seen uh, red, which is Adom. Yes, uh, here. Yes, Adom. Which means red, ruddy of man, horse, and etc. But now, we have the name Edom, right? As he was called Edom. Edom has the same Hebrew word, Adom. It's exactly the same, Adom. What you see here, Adom. Now, then we have another uh, Hebrew word which is connected with Adam, which is Adam Dam, Adam Dam. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, <laughs> but it is Adam Dam, Adam Dam. Now, in the uh, Paleo Hebrew rules, when the Aleph is in front of the word, it can be dropped. And so instead of Adam Dam, you will have Dam Dam. Okay, which will give us the Kikongo Ndundu, which also means red or albino. See? So Ndundu, which can be defined as red, can also be defined as albino. So when we drop the Aleph, of Adam Dam, you will have the consonant DM, DM, which translates into the Kikongo consonant N, D, N, D. So what you see is that uh, the DM has been flipped and, you know, and becomes N, D. So, these people writing, copying the Bantu scrolls, okay, those people who were copying the Bantu scrolls flipped the, the, the consonants and it went from ND to DM, DM, right? But the origin is ND, ND, which gives us Ndundu. 
Ndundu. They made it dum dum. Dum dum. Do you know the film with uh, what was the film with that night guy? Uh, night watch or something uh, with a comedian uh, there was this statue in the museum right and every time he passed uh, around the museum uh, that that statue just a head a long tall head will say dum 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 <laughs> you see how they they mock you know but we we don't know people don't know it's ndundu the a dum dum is actually dum dum uh, because we drop the Aleph and you will get Ndundu. Ndundu is red or albino in its definition. Okay. Is it night at the museum? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Mm, so he is the, the, the Hebrew, Adam Dam, which is Ndundu, okay, Ndundu. Now it's, it's reddish, be a reddish, right? Reddish. Now, before I go any further, let me go back a little bit. See this word dum dum is ndundu. It means red, reddish, or what? Albino. Okay, remember that. Albino. All right. Now, here's the definition: reddish, a dum dum, dundu, reddish. When we start the, uh, the scriptural texts where dum dum dundu, um, where it is found, you will see that it is ma in its majority is found. Uh, majority. Let me say it's only found in the book of Lef Leviticus, dealing with some kind some kind of a plague. Okay, it deals with a plague. Now look at this. And in the place of the boil, there be a white rising or a bright spot, white and somewhat reddish. And it be, and it be showed to the priest. Now, if you read the complete chapter of Leviticus 13, it will be clear that they are dealing with leprosy, okay? They are dealing with leprosy. Now, this leprosy is the genetic mutation, which is called fitiligo, okay? It is called fitiligo. And if they be in the bald head or bald forehead or white reddish sore, it is a leprosy sprung up in his bald head. So read the complete chapter of Leviticus 13 and you will see that it talks about leprosy. Okay, so this word ndundu deals with a disease in scripture of leprosy. It's, it's strange, eh? So we know by scripture, yes, and we understand now that by scripture, we have seen that this plague of leprosy is actually called Ndundu in the Kikongo. Right? Red is also albino. Mm. Reddish people. So Esau, according to the 
Bukongo tradition came out as a reddish person, albino. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, let me go ahead. Allow me to search for a, 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 a book. Let me do it like this, okay? Uh, one moment. Let me look for this book. Uh, bear with me for a, for a moment. Hmm. Where are you? Okay, bear with me. I'm I'm coming. What, what, uh, you know, okay, all right, so the question is then, is there a historic document that will inform us about, you know, Ndundu or Albinos? Did the Portuguese write about them? Yes. Okay, that is interesting. It is from um, the history of the Kingdom of Congo by Pigafetta of 1591. Okay. And he writes the following as he uh, describes the Congo people. The man and woman of Congo are black. Some approaching all life color, okay, with black curly hair and others with red hair. See here, others with red hair, okay, red hair. The man, a middle height, and ex accepting the black skin are like the Portuguese, <laughs> yeah, the Portuguese Jews, yeah, perhaps. The purples of the eyes are of various shades, okay? You see that? Various shades, some black, others of the color of the sea. Now, what color is that? What color does that describe? The color of the sea. You tell me. Okay? That color is, of course, blue, right? So, Congo people, black men and women, black curly hair, right? Some of them have red hair. Ndundu. Some have black eyes, but various shades, and others have the color of the eyes as the sea, which is to say blue. So in Congo, in Africa, we still have children, people who are born with different shades of eyes, blue, you know, green, black, brown, light brown eyes, still being born, have not mixed with any other race, but it is the genetic in them. All right? Hmm. 
Okay? So we have ndundu, red albino. Okay. Now, matondo bitter herbs for your donation. It is appreciated. May Tatanzambe bless you and increase you. Ingeta. Now, Eden, Ndundu, okay, Ndundu, Eden, who is Nsafu, yes, Nzuzi, the quarreler, came to his father Isaac, bless me too, you know, I want the blessing, I, I too want to be blessed. And his father answered him, your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness. Away from the dew of heaven above. Okay. Now, many of you who read from the King James will say, hey, that's not correct. That's not what I'm reading in my new, in my King James Bible. But it's the correct translation. See, you, so you who say, I will only read from the King James. You know, that statement is actually foolish. Because the new or the King James is just a translation. So if you're wise, if you are a true researcher, you will compare the translations, not just stick with one translation. All right? That's wisdom, right? It's common sense. Okay, look. When we go to Bible Hub, and we put in Genesis 27, verse 39, okay, we can compare the translations. And you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Let me enlarge for those who want it up close. Okay. Now, this is Genesis 20, 27, verse 39. His father Isaac, New International Version, what we have read. Your dwelling will be away from the earth's fatness or richness away from the dew of heaven new living says the same thing finally his father Isaac said to him you will live away from the richness of the earth and away from the dew of heaven the blessings of above English standard version behold away from the fatness of the earth shall your dwelling be Berean standard bible Behold, your dwelling place shall be away from the richness of the land. On the testimony of two or three shall every case be established, right? Now we come to King James Bible. And Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. What? Huh? What? Everyone else is saying, away, away. Away, but the King James persists, goes against everyone, and says, Your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. See? And that's exactly what I meant when I said, If you are a true researcher, you cannot just stick with one translation. The King James is just a translation, one of the many translations. You have to compare the translations. Okay? Compare the translation. So you see, all other translations see that Esau, Edom, Ndundu will live away from the fertility of the earth, the richness of the earth, the fatness of the earth. All, every other translation says the same thing. Even the Amplified Bible says, your dwelling shall be away from the fertility, fatness, right? 
of the earth and away from the dew of heaven above. Oh, the King James is wrong. The King James is wrong. Now the earth's richness or the earth's fatness, okay, is the fertile place, the rich place, the rich soil, which is Central Africa, Congo, Katsiopa. It is the most richest soil, fertile and full of natural resources. It is the land that drinks the rain of heaven. So we are told by scripture, Idum Ndundu Isau Nzuzi, you quarreler, you who want Jacob to feed you all the time, you, your dwelling shall be away from the fatness of the earth, the richness of the earth, from the fertility, the fertile soil, the most fertile soil of the earth, away from it. Yes. And that land is Central Africa, the most rich soil, the most fertile grounds, full of natural resources. And he went out. Yes. He was driven out by the decree of Zulu, of heaven. Eventually, he and his seed found themselves outside of Africa. Yes. And we know that the dukes of Edom, they were in charge of many parts of Europe. Okay. He went into Kitchen. Later, he established kingdom over there. The Roman Empire, etc. He went out of the fatness of the earth, as was prophesied. Dundu. As he went out, he mixed himself with different people groups, different races, and you know, whatnot. And his seed became completely spoiled, as was prophesied. He continued in that DNA mutations. Okay. He continued to mutate genetically as he was mixing himself and living outside of Katsiopa. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Now, then Esau continues, of uh, sorry, uh, Isaac, Iseka, continues and says, And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. See? So Esau Ndundu started as a servant to Yakuba. Yeah. But when thou shalt have the dominion, so there will come a day that Esau Ndundu will have dominion. Yes, he will gain dominion over Yakuba. That thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So they broke the servitude. Right? from Yakuba, and they put that servitude to the children of Yakuba, the Bantu, as they came back from outside Africa, right, from Europe, they came to do what? To seek out the children of Yakuba, because they have that perpetual hate you know, to destroy Yakuba. Now, everything that Esau, Edom, Ndundu will gain 
oh, I put in Dutch in there. <laughs> okay. Um, will be by the sword. That is to say, war and conflict. Yes, war and conflict. All his advancement will be achieved by his cunningness and violent. See? Wow! This is Dundu. This is exactly what we have witnessed and what we continue to witness. Right? And we're not even talking about uh, sons of Ishmael at this point. They are there too. But that's a, a different a different session, a different conversation. Okay, but they are there too. But we have seen now, according to the Bukongo tradition, we have seen Esau and Jacob right there in the Bukongo tradition that tells us that the Congo is the source, that we, Bana Congo, in our traditions, we have these stories. Hmm? That's something, eh? That's something. So, to all the Hebrew Israelites out there, brothers and sisters, who are continue to call us Hamites and whatnot, I say to you, continue to pray, okay? And continue to do your research. And may the spirit of Congo, the Most High, in Zambia, Pungutulendo, open your eyes to see that we are Congo. We are called by his name, Congo. The land is called Congo. If my people who are called by my name, okay? Israel is not the name of the Most High. <laughs> uh, Israel is not the name of the Most High. Even when you say Yasharel, Yasharel, it's not the name of the Most High. The name is Congo. Yes. And we are called by his name, Congo. The land is called by his name, Congo. All right? And we as a people, we are Ba Congo. Bana Congo. Bana Zulu. The children of heaven. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. That is beautiful. Beautiful kid. Toko yakusakanate. Kitoko. Beautiful. That is who we are. Right? So, Kembo, Kembo, Kembo. Everyone who believes, write Congo with capital letters in the chat right now. If you don't do it, you're a, <laughs> you're a suspect. Okay? If you don't do it, you're a suspect. If you believe and you agree, you understand this teaching today. Write Congo in capital letters in the chat. Hallelujah. Kembo, Kembo, Kembo. So I hope you enjoyed this teaching and for some a great revelation. Yes, uh, share it with other family members, friends. Anyone who needs to understand the hidden Bukongo, Bakongo tradition of Jacob and Esau, Nzuzi and Simba, right? Nsafu and Yakuba. Okay? We have seen that um, Jacob is Yakuba. Yeah, meaning the elevated one, honorable one, you know, great one. Kuba means the one who possesses, who takes. Ya can also refer to dominion. So you, you, Yakuba is the one who possesses the, uh, the dominion. Yes, Simba is the holder. He holds 
the 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 covenant of the seven he holds the blessing you know he holds the prayer the 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 spirituality of of zambia pungutulendo he is the perfect spiritual man the complete man we have seen that the uh, the word plain as it is described jacob was a plain man it does not really mean plain it's actually complete right complete perfect in beauty yes complete man physical beauty and strength comes from the uh, kikongo atoma or toma which means uh, admirable beautiful and etc yes uh, we have seen nzuzi which is esau right esau is the quarreler and uh, esau is the the ndundu uh, we see that in the Hebrew, Esaf is the Kikongo Nsafu. So Esau is Nsafu. He is Nzuzi, the quarreler. Yes, we have also uh, seen that he is the hunter, the killer of animals. Animals are going extinct through them. He is the red man. He came out red. Yes, he is the red man. The word for red here in the Hebrew, Adam, which is also the same word for Edom, as he was called Edom, because he wanted to be fed, right? He said, hey, Jacob, Yakuba, fed me now. Until today, they want to be fed by Yakuba, by Africa. Africa is, you know, like uh, sustaining them. Without Africa, they suffer. They go, you know... They hunger, they will die of hunger. See, still today, they want Yakuba, Bakongo, to feed them. Now, the word Edom is the same, Adam, which, which is also connected with Adam, Adam, Dam, the um, Aleph, as a consonant, drops. So we have, um, as a vowel, sorry, drops, we have Dam, Dam which will give us ndundu, red albino. See, the consonant dm, dm is actually nd, nd. They flipped it and made it dm, but it's actually nd, nd, which gives us ndundu, red albino. We have seen Esau was expelled from the earth richness. He went away, right? His dwelling was outside, far away from the earth's richness, etc. Edom went out of Africa, Ndundu, and he was in his action, in his nature, a man of the sword, just like his brother Ismael, a man of the sword. He lived by the sword, which is war. Everything that Esau obtained, Everything that he gained, he did it by war and conflict. Everything, all his achievement, uh, all what he would uh, achieve by his cunningness and violence, right? That's Esau. Don't do. So thank you for watching. I'm Nabi Kefas, Matondo Nzambi Abenisa, and I see you next time. Remember to like, share, you know, and subscribe if you're not. Also, check out my Patreon page. I have additional teachings over there. Also, deep teachings for you to enjoy. Hallelujah. Kembo, kembo, kembo. Natatanzambi, Yamazulu. In Geta.